Connectors is a very important topic in the pre-processing of geometry using hypermesh. These connectors can be of several different types like bolts, spot welds, seam welds and also adhesives. In this video, we will focus on the bolt connector. I will show three different methods to model bolts using hypermesh. At the end of this video, I will also compare the results obtained by performing the same simulation on these three different bolts. So let's get right into it. To start with, let's take a look at the simplest method to create a bolt. In this method, we will use RBE2 rigid elements to join the different components of our model. If our geometry is very simple and we don't want to increase the complexity, this is the best method to model a bolt. We will use a simple model where two sheet metal plates are to be bolted together at a specific location. I have meshed the plates using two dimensional quad elements and assigned a proper material and property to specify thickness and other necessary settings. Let's start by creating a new component to store RBE2 rigid elements. Now we will use the rigid tab from 1D panel to create the rigid elements. Set dependent node to multiple nodes and independent node to calculate node. We will use the by path selection criteria to select all the nodes on the edge of the bolt hole. Similarly, select all the nodes on the lower plate. With all 6 degrees of freedom checked, create the rigid. Let's review this rigid element. The dependent slave nodes are situated along the whole circumference and the position of the independent node is automatically calculated. Now this rigid will act as a simple bolt connection to join the two plates. There are several drawbacks to this method. Using RBE2 elements in the model induces excessive stiffness in the model and causes highly inaccurate results. Another disadvantage is that this bolt does not conform to a proper shape and hence we cannot extract the deformation and stress patterns induced in this bolt. Now we will take a look at a different method. In this, we will use 1D beam elements to model a bolt by providing a proper cross section. Let's take a look at how this is done. Create a new component to store RBE2 spider elements. With dependent node on multiple nodes and independent node on calculate node, select all the nodes on the circular edge by using the by path selection criteria. Create the rigid element. Similarly, Create a separate rigid element on the lower plate. Now we will link these two rigid elements by using a one dimensional beam element. Create a new component for the beam bolt. We will create a new property for this bolt. Now go to hyperbeam tab in 1D panel. With radio button on standard section, set the library to hyperbeam. Select solid circle as the section type and click on create to launch the hyperbeam interface. As we need a M12 bolt in this model, I will set the radius to 6 mm. Exit hyperbeam by pressing the model icon. Now. Change the card image of bolt property collector to P beam L. We will use the steel material for this bolt. In the beam section selection box, select the newly created hyper beam. Now assign this property to the bolt component. Open the bars tab from 1D panel. Select proper property. Set the orientation to any direction perpendicular to the axis of bolt. Use element type as C beam. Now create the beam by selecting independent nodes of the rigid spiders. To visualize the bolt, 
select 1D detailed representation from the drop down. Now we can clearly see the bolt connector. Now as we are using the P beam L card, we can extract the stresses induced in this bolt. But still, as we are using RBE2 elements, there is a certain inaccuracy in the results. A better alternative would be to use RBE3 elements. These elements do not actually act as rigids. In these, the locations of independent and dependent nodes are reversed and they only transfer the load without causing excessive stiffness in the model. Create a new component for RBE3 elements. Using the RBE3 tab from 1D panel, we will create two different rigid elements on the plates just like we did in the previous method. All the other steps are similar to the previous method. With a proper beam section and property assigned to a new bolt component, we will create the beam element with specified orientation. We have successfully created a bolt using RBE3 rigids and one dimensional beam elements. Now that we have seen three different methods to create bolts, let's compare the results. We will set up a simple linear static subcase and run it on all the three models and then compare the results simultaneously in Hyperview. Create a new load collector for single point constraints. By using the by path selection criteria, we will select all the nodes on this edge to constrain them in all degrees of freedom. Now create a separate load collector for force. Select all the nodes on this edge. By specifying proper magnitude and direction, create the force. To combine the force and constraints, create a new load step. Set the analysis type as linear static. Select proper load collectors in the selection boxes. Press Ctrl F and type global output request to define control card for output. Check the box next to displacement and set the format as H3D. Do the same for stress. Now save the model. Save the FEM file in the same folder. With export options to all and run options to analysis, click on Optistruct to launch the solver. As the analysis is now complete, let's load the results simultaneously in Hyperview. Now we can compare the stress and deformation patterns and take a look at the changes occurring by using different kinds of bolts. I have already run the same simulation for the remaining two types of bolts. Let's synchronize the windows. Select displacement from contours panel and click on apply. Do this for all the windows. We can clearly see the difference in maximum displacement values for different types of bolts. RBE3 bolt shows greater deformation as there is no unwanted stiffness in the model. Set the results to equivalent stress and change averaging method to simple. Although the stress values are same, we can clearly see a variation in the stress patterns observed on the plates. Even though the variation in the results is very small, this will amount to a greater inaccuracy in case of large number of bolts in the model. Therefore, before we start the pre-processing of our model, we need to choose a proper bolt type as per our requirements. Personally, I always prefer using the RBE3 beam element bolts as these provide sufficiently accurate results. And this is how we can create bolt connectors using Hypermesh. If you like this video, please hit the red subscribe button and give a big thumbs up, it helps a lot. Do watch my other videos to learn how to set up and run simulations using Hypermesh.